You ready to start, my guy? I'm ready to start. Gandalf the Wise. All right, so I want to actually start by, I wrote you a poem. You wrote a poem? I wrote a poem for you. Oh my gosh. It's entitled 10 Hundred Woes. Hold on, let me get comfortable. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, lay it on me, brother. Oh my dog. He walks the path so long and clear. Matte medium and fluid acrylics dripping from his ears. From Seattle to Michigan and around the earth, from murals and merch and his new baby's birth. His lips are the most chapped there ever was. He <laughs> creates his vivid kingdoms just because. Business brains this burly boy brings. If you don't subscribe. Oh, sorry. This business brains this burly boy brings. Burly his boy. video cannot be compared. Oh, when he sings. This man's a hero. So kind and fair. If you do not subscribe, please do beware. For now, this tale has come to its point. A saint's whose glory doth does anoint. When around him, my joy is not encumbered. Please welcome my good friend, Mr. Ten Hundred. Wow. 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 wow, dude. I'm honored. That was like pretty much the greatest poem ever written in the history of the world. <laughs> I, you saw me writing it like 10 minutes before. Oh, like, that was, was like, you're like, I, I, I got to do something. Like He's like, just be quiet for like yeah. 15 minutes. And I was supposed to write it like I like how you ago. rhymed encumbered with Ten Hundred. And guess what? I don't even know what that means. That's wordsmithery. I don't know what it means, and we're dressed up crazy because this is the Halloween special, as you could probably tell. Oh, that's that's why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I th <laughs> this is just my New York City attire. Yeah. So, what are you doing in New York? Welcome. You've been staying for a couple of days. What's been up? Why are you in uh, the East Coast, my I've man? Come to cast some spells and fight some dark elves. Yeah. No. Uh, New York City Comic Con happened, and I am partnered up with this toy company called martian toys they're going to be releasing some cool 10 hundred toys and figurines in the future we had my prototype for the very first time at new york city oh yes i was selling prints i made like special pins and i was just sort of like a guest artist nice and then i was i talked to the guy over at martian toys and he helped you get in so we had like a super righteous day at comic Con. yeah i mean you're so nice i was lucky to just ghost with you and you got me a free ticket and i had an absolute blast. Also, people, the millions of people who watch this podcast, you could tell we got absolutely new tchotchkes for the table. And most of this stuff is from the con. And I spent way too much money, Bro. but I, I was like a kid in the candy That shop. first, like I've done uh, like five or six comic cons before. And like that first con intoxication that mm -hmm. rushes over you. And you're just like, I need all this crazy <laughs> stuff. And I was just like... I was like looking at you just going super ham oh, and I was like, I remember my first con too, bro. I know. Like, and I was literally, oh my God, what a, what a, like just gluttony of, this might be an issue. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Just go like this. yeah. <laughs> That's your pop filter so that like you don't do the P's and B's into the microphone. You just have like <laughs> ancient Roman. <laughs> I rock this for a little bit. Ancient Roman. Oh, you sound bad. Yeah, he sounds like a robot voice now. Scratch my but to also get back to your question about why the heck I'm in New York City, I mean, reason numero uno is to hang out with my boy, I Slew. love you, bro. Yeah, um, dude. And it's really funny and serendipitous, my favorite word, because almost exactly two years ago, I flew to Seattle and he, Chelsea and Peter graciously let me stay at their house and we did the ep most epic mural. Maybe we'll play a clip of the um, mural project we did, but it was awesome. And that was October, end of October 2019. And now we we're... 2021 October, and we're back again, and we're col collabing on another mural. Boom, baby. Hell yeah, it's so Do we want to tell them how that freaking mural happened? Yeah, please. I think that's a great segue. <laughs> you go ahead and do that, because it's literally your doing. Dude, so I'm at the Martian Toys booth at New York City Comic Con. I'm chilling out, meeting a few people here and there, and uh, this dude comes up, and he's just kind of like, he's just kind of like doing one of these, like spying at me, and then he comes up, he's like, yo, are you 10 hundred? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, man. He's like, bro, I watch all your videos. Like, and then he was just like grabbing people from the aisle, like, yo, you know who this is, right? Here? He was like, they formed a semicircle around me, and he's just like the biggest instantaneous hype man ever. And I was like, dude, are you just like my new publicist? Because you talk about me better than anybody's ever talked about me before. He's like, I got a wall for you, baby. I got anything you need. You need this. You need that. I'm here for you. I'm John143. Don't forget the underscore, baby. We got you. <laughs> so he like, we're like, freaking sweet, dude. Like, let's let's go. Even if this is like all not true, like you'll just be in the background of the video being the most entertaining piece of content ever just based off of your hype. So we roll over there to the Bronx. And Peter's not exaggerating. This guy's like the most Bronx 
hype man you've ever heard. Yeah. And he's just intoxicating, man. Like he could just talk about anything and you're like, go on. I'm buying into all this. I love it. I have a freaking beard hair in my mouth. This is not comfortable. So we get over there to the Bronx and he has this beautiful wall for mm -hmm. us. We get a bunch of spray paint. We just started putting up our sketches yesterday. Today we're recording the podcast. Tomorrow we're finishing the mural. But like I had absolutely no expectations to come to New York City and paint a mural. I had no expectations to collab on a mural with yeah. you, but it just like all of this serendipitous, serendipitous, serendipitous. <laughs> it was to, to use a slew word came together. And now we're just like painting this super. Epic yeah. And wall. there's no like it, it literally was that. I mean, this guy came out of the woodwork, was a mega fan of you, but there was dozens of people that were coming up to 10 hundred. I felt like I felt like secondhand fame from you at Comic-Con <laughs> because everyone was coming up. You sold like. Well, I was only there for a Friday, probably like four hours. The amount of prints and things you sold, it was awesome. But um, yeah, shout out John. I mean, we have a lot of work to do tomorrow. Have you done a mural in New York before? No, dude, never. And I was telling you, literally the last mural I did was with you in Seattle. Like I don't do murals. Yeah. And I love it. And that's how what I wanted to do. Watching you and Kipto literally inspired me to start doing murals. But now, now I just do like paintings and that's like what I'm into. But um, that's cool that every time we hang out, like. You Dude, and I mean, what a dream. I mean, to like paint not only with you, but in New York City. And the wall is massive. I mean, for me. And it's just beautiful. And I'm, I'm just so amped. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, so paint a mural. Kicking it with Slew. Yep. Doing New York Comic Con. Just enjoying the heck out and of And this New York. is like, besides, I mean, before you were traveling, you were in Kansas City with Kipto, actually. And you also did that other collab with Kipto in Chicago. But like, this is like the first time you've been traveling in a while, right? Because... Yeah. Um, you travel a lot for murals. I mean, obviously, hopefully everyone listening like knows who Ten Hundred is. I didn't really give an intro, but I mean, global professional muralist has like epic YouTube videos on YouTube. I don't really need to give the spiel because I'm sure everyone knows. But if you don't, shame on you and go check out his channel. <laughs> but can you talk about 2020 and like 2021, like massively? Also, before we even continue, it's October something, and Vivid Kingdoms just. Ended. And let me be the first one to congratulate you because you freaking you, shut friend. down. <laughs> you shut down. Uh, you should put mics on the yeah. end of these. And just <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Vivid Kingdoms were pretty good. Yeah, but Vivid Kingdoms was this Kickstarter deck of cards he designed, seven series video. And what was the final number? 2.5, 2.4 million dollars. 2.14 oh. 2. something, something, something. Oh, really? Something, I thought yeah. it was like two point plus. Well, bummer, buddy. <laughs> I <next> know. <laughs> I just couldn't hit that 2.5. But what was it? Over 22,000 people back the Kickstarter. Yeah. You shut it down. Massive congratulations. It was like, it's been the most insane month ever. Yeah, that, that it, I think it really just shows the power of storytelling and like connecting with your audience and asking your audience for feedback because like, I don't know if you mentioned this, but like Vivid Kingdoms is a custom deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing about making playing cards when I went into it. And I started from like absolute zero. I just had like a strong desire in my heart to like make a dope set of playing cards. So I made the first video and I asked my audience, like, what do you think of the background? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Right. And like people were giving me so many awesome feedback. And then like the super duper card collector started to come out of the woodwork and give me like awesome Chris tips. Ramsey. Chris Ramsey, like well, I've followed and I knew I love him. Yeah, he's like a huge YouTuber, huge magician. He does these like crazy puzzle boxes on his channel. He's got like millions and millions of subscribers. My fans actually like reached out to him and were like blowing up his DMs, being like, "Yo, Ten Hundred's making this deck. Like, you should talk to him. Like, you're the expert or whatever." And he came on and like just schooled me. And throughout this process of making these seven videos, like people saw every single success. They saw every single failure. They mm -hmm. were able to vote on these polls. They were help. They helped me make really key decisions on the trajectory of this deck. And then by the time it was all done, a lot of people were so invested in the story and they felt even like they played a small role in like making the deck itself. Yeah. I mean, I was gonna say it's like one giant collaboration almost yeah. with the people who supported you and the people who love your art. Yeah, it, which was just awesome. And then that first day, like I set my goal for my Kickstarter at like ten thousand dollars. And what like, a fucking joke that was! <laughs> and ten thousand like, dollars the first thirty nanoseconds. We hit it in the first thirty minutes, and then like no, we hit it in the first three minutes. Yeah, and then it hit a hundred k in like the first thirty minutes, and it just like kept going. And I was like, 
just freaking shaking and like freaking out. I can't and I was imagine like, Holy what that cow, like. dude. Like, and then we had planned for ages to take this like family vacation and stay at like a super chill cabin in the woods in like northern Michigan on the lake. And it was, it was really, really good that that happened. And also like super, because all I wanted to do was just like sit in front of my computer and like watch this number go up and freak oh, out. Oh, so you did like, this little family vacation so right like, when it went public? I, I dropped the Kickstarter and literally like, I kind of sat there and saw it hit 100K and then we like jumped in the car. All of our oh suitcases were in there. That's right. And then I did like a six hour drive and Chelsea was in the back like with her cell phone just being like, oh, it's at 300K <laughs> now. <laughs> like, oh, it's at <laughs> And I'm just like, <laughs> like, I'm sitting there doing this long road trip. And all I want to be doing is just like freaking out. Yeah. And, like, and, and my, you said your Discord was going absolutely bananas, yeah, my pa right? my patrons over on Discord are, like, super active and just, like, we're such a family over there. And, like, they were just, like, so hyped. Everybody, because you know what's crazy about, like, the Kickstarter thing is that literally anyone who goes to my Kickstarter can see the exact number and the exact amount of money that I sold. And I love that transparency because, like, the entire project was so transparent. Like, right. I showed every single part of this. And it's almost, like, perfectly fitting that even at the end with, like, the money and the sales, that was transparent, too. And it's almost like this Hollywood ending to this long-ass story I was telling. And, like, people seem to be, like, really genuinely hyped at, like, well, the success I mean, of the I project. I mean, the, the, the creative thing, like you were saying, is, like, the reach. You're just getting more disheveled as time <laughs> goes on. I know. <laughs> Gandalf is looking a little worse for no, wear right now. Amazing. But, yeah, I mean, the scope of the project. But, yeah, how... I mean, how, uh, it's hard to get that analytic and metric, but how many people that maybe didn't even know you but saw a trending or some friend told another friend and, like how legitimate yeah. it all was. Every single car is custom. Like how many people that didn't know you probably backed it, right? Probably thousands, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, and um, once that it became really, really successful, like some of the playing card blogs started like right. writing about it yeah. and like the pl collectible playing card community on Reddit started like making posts about it. And as it became more successful, it kind of snowballed and started reaching new audiences, which was from video number one, I was like, guys, do you think this is another moment where my fans could like interact? I was like, do you think I should put these on my website or do you think I should put these on Kickstarter? Cause maybe like with Kickstarter, they're going to take a percentage and take some fees and stuff, mm -hmm. but it also might open me up to a wider world of like playing card collectors and stuff. And yeah. that's how it ended up working out too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know any professional, again, I'm not the card expert but i don't think any of the biggest card companies sell sixty thousand decks in one drop i don't think ever well it's the number one leave it to gandalf playing card kickstarter of all time well kickstarter but i'm even saying Woo! like any normal yeah. any normal Wait, I'm not prepared. Oh, I'm not prepared. Oh, <laughs> well deserved. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Now I'm really going more disheveled right yeah. now. <laughs> well, well deserved. It's yeah, it was, it's, it's wild. And now I got to go into the crazy gauntlet of fulfillment. Oh, man. Like, yeah, that's what, pe that's what we were talking about. Because also... Where'd my wizard hat go, dude? This is about right. Poof. Right it vanished. There we go. Because what people don't understand, especially if you're fans of 1000, which I am also, I've been, I've been lucky to like become good friends with you. And like, I know, but like the amount of logistics that not just the Kickstarter, which is its whole separate venture and entity, but like how legit and we're taught, we're transitioning now to 1000s, like what he does, but like the logistics of your whole operation of being a business and entrepreneur, not just a fine artist, right? Like your whole merchandising system and like enterprise and like all of that like your employees that help you fulfill orders and do the monthly t-shirts and like all of this other back-end stuff that we were talking about that people don't even get and then yeah for this one project not just printing and manufacturing sixty thousand decks with the custom sleeve and the gilded editions but all the other merch the uncut the, what are they called the uncut, uncut uncut sheets uncut sheets like all of that you have to deliver that make it to people like how how does that work and like what what is well how the my fridge does freaking, that work my initial plan is like okay I, uh i already have a merchandise warehouse i have employees who just like kind of ship out orders all day and handle handle customer service and stuff and i was like we got this bro like that's <laughs> that's when <laughs> that's when my goal was like ten thousand dollars 
I was planning on like, okay, you know, maybe I'll bring on a few extra people and like, we'll just have pizza parties and fucking put on the tunes and like have a good time. But now it's grown so much that I'm definitely like um, exploring some, uh, some fulfillment partners and people who can like maybe help me out with a little bit of this. So right now I'm actually literally at the stage where I'm like weighing the options of like, do I work with these people that'll probably make my life a little bit easier? Or with the fees that I would have paid them, do I just bring on like a ton more people and we do it in house or like that, that is becoming another part of the equation. And even like the quantities of like playing cards that we're ordering from this United States playing card company, they're having like logistical meetings because we sold like 6,000 uncut sheets and they said they've never shipped out an order that size before. And they might need to get like refrigerated trucks because they use this special coating. And when you stack that many on top of each other, it'll start to like break down. And I'm like, what is going on? This is insane. Like, <laughs> yeah, what? Like, what are you even talking so about? So they're like, they're having logistical meetings about just like trying to fulfill this order. And it's like, it went so bananas that like all of my plans that I had laid out before I launched the Kickstarter, I'm having to adapt those and change those and see what's going to really, really make this work. Because the number one thing that I want is like all these amazing backers who supported the project. I want them to just have an incredible experience. Of and course. that's what we're trying to freaking deliver. Dude, the, just supporting the project was like a giant experience for some people, you know, like yeah. me. I couldn't like freaking wait to c- support click and be like, yes, Thank yes. You. Give me the blood. <laughs> give me the uh, Kickstarter limited edition one. Yes, I want yes. that, please. My precious. My precious. Thank you, my dude. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And uh, can we, uh, what did I ask you before? Okay, so 2020, because so that's like, maybe we talked, you said your words, this Hollywood ending, but like the past, whatever, 12 months, you moved from Seattle. Now you've probably talked about this, of course, if you follow me, you know, but I want to run it down because it's been a crazy year for you. You moved from Seattle to Michigan. Mm-hmm. You bought a home. Mm-hmm. You renovated a, like a property home with your wife, Chelsea. And you had a baby. You had a baby. Just a little, you know, sweet little juniper. A little hey, shout baby. out juniper. <laughs> <laughs> shout out juniper. And so, like, what a crazy year, huh? Yeah, it has been a wild year, and it all happened during COVID, so mm. that put a little bit of extra stuff on it. Um, it has been an awesome year. I was living in Seattle for like 15 years or 14 years, I believe. And being a YouTuber, like you know this, mm-hmm. honestly, like the majority of your time is like sitting in a room pushing buttons on a computer to try to tell the best story that you can tell. And me and wifey were like, why are we living in a big city, sitting in traffic all the time, always searching for parking, dealing with all of the pitfalls of a big city when all we ever do is like chill at home. And like, I just make videos like, yeah. So we were like, let's go to Michigan and like buy a really cool house for super cheap compared to Seattle and just like set up a sweet little production facility and, It just made a lot of sense. And we knew we wanted to start thinking about building a family. And I'm like so pumped to be living in Michigan now. Yeah, Yeah, you've been telling me how awesome it is. I mean, and just in terms of the cost of living compared to Brooklyn, we... (laughs) 100 and I got breakfast this morning (laughs) and we got bacon, egg and cheeses at this nice spot. I mean, let's be honest, it was a nice spot, but they were... They were like $23. three bucks. And there was no... It was was like a... A bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich on a blank white plate. Yeah. It was like just the same. It wasn't gilded in gold. There yeah. was no like, you know. New York be expensive. The first day, the very first thing I bought when I got here was a 16 ounce black coffee and it cost $9. That's not normal though. I want to say to yeah. people also being like, I don't just get $23 <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheeses every day. This was like, we were shopping for Halloween outfits and it just happened to be this place in Union Square that looked nice and we wanted to get a good food. Treat yourself. You're on vacation. You had this mm-hmm. successful... Um, what'd you do again? You did decks or something? Something Decks of cards. And uh, (laughs) so you're treating yourself. You're on vacation. Have a good time. But yeah, I mean, twenty three dollars is just outrageous. Yeah, New York be expensive. Yo, yo. But Um, you're asking about like how twenty twenty affected my art. Like, mm -hmm. not too much, luckily for me, just because what I do really involves like sitting in my YouTube studio and making a lot of videos. I had some really cool mural festivals I was supposed to go to that got canceled. But honestly, like, it wasn't too bad. Right, a lot worse for a lot more people yeah and we were talking about that and we're kind of lucky that we kind of just kept on being recluses and i don't even travel and do murals like you do like that's like part of your gig but i mean yeah we were just if anything in a weird way like the views were up and like people were on their computers more during covid you know and like social media tiktok like you like tiktok obviously is huge but like you wonder chris you can probably chime in here like how much tiktok blew up because of 
quarantine. I mean, it's, that's when I got on it. I was yeah. like, all right, what else do I do? And now I have this thing to do for seven hours a day. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and same with like millions of kids. And yeah. like, I'm sure it would have still done well, but the, it just blew up in a different way. People were online. So, yeah, for us, weird, weirdly, COVID was like a, I don't know, it was a weird yeah, time of prosper, but also the world was slowly ending. But I don't know. Definitely over it now, right? Totally. I ah. mean, you're here. Yeah. We're chilling. We've been, we're paying murals. We're freaking around. <laughs> Can I do a quick segue? No. If you're ever invited on a podcast and you're a little bit nervous and you're like, what do I do with my hands? Bring a wizard staff. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, I'm like jealous, bro. I'm trying to go like this half the time. You look so. If you're, if you're like wise. me and, and you get a little nervous at these type of things and you're a little bit fidgety, like just having a nice solid wizard staff with you. You look so stoic, bro. I swear, I'm looking you. Up. Have you seen me fidgety? I'm like, fuck. Like I need to like. Uh, you want to hold like, this for a while? It make you feel better. It, look, you feel it that feels power. Powerful. Yeah. You look like Moses. Oh man, it's like yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. I should have gotten like a spear or something. Some Napoleon. Yeah. But you're uh, like a lightsaber, dude. You can just hold on to that thing. Yeah, that prop is beautiful back there. I I swear I spent way too much money at Comic Con, but that lightsaber behind ten hundred was probably the best purchase. Ever. Dude, congratulations to you on this epic, legendary, oh, freaking art studio right in the heart of Thanks, New York bro. City, and this awesome new podcast you're launching. Like you're making some major life moves too, man. Uh, yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Also, boy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, bro. Thank Go you. Ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, uh, yeah, and like. Yeah, it's been a crazy year also, but it's it's awesome. We're trying. We're trying new things. Like, this is just like a brand new venture. This is only the 11th episode, and I wanted to do it big for you because you'll probably be the biggest episode. Also, you're the homie, and we have good I'm chemistry. really bummed out I wasn't the 10th episode. Keep talking. I'm listening. <laughs> um, let me bring this closer to my mouth right here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's just fun. I think I just like, I'm so in love with podcasts. I personally watch so much podcasts. Me and Chris talk about this all the time. It's just fun. Also for you, like I'm lucky enough to know you and I've been following your videos for so long and also like Kipto people like that, but it's like, I want to know more. Yeah. You're super personable on your videos and you talk about everything. You're you probably even more share about, share more about your life than I do in my normal videos. But it's like these conversations, like I want to know, I want to dive deep. I want to hear you talk like for anyone as a viewer to other people i was telling i don't know we were just talking about this i love watching like actors in interviews long form interviews like a lot of actors will do other people's podcasts and it's like it's just a different type of conversation than like the the hollywood reporter like two minute yeah bullshit questions of like blah 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 blah, blah. then like you know long form baby. long form baby i love yeah. it and how many have you done any other podcasts well the first ever and last ever 10 hundred podcast was with you, with you, my dude. Dang, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, we just did that on a spur of the moment. Whim. I love that. I've watched that like four times. I, this is my Memories. first time doing a video podcast, except for the one that we yeah. did together. And I was kind of more in control of that. So like, yeah. it's definitely a little bit of a different experience with like lights and cameras and action and everything. I've done some like audio podcasts and all yeah. that stuff, but... And we got Wario behind the mic over oh, here. We got it all going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I even got my a, own angle now. What's yeah, up? We got the Chris Cam. I mean, this is just one giant fever dream. But I think this this has the potential to be maybe one of the because we're such bros. Mm -hmm. Like when when a total stranger comes in here and talks to you, you probably like want to dig deep and really yeah, get I to do. know them exactly. But I just I honestly feel like just shooting the shit with you. That's for what an we're hour. doing. I mean, <laughs> I, I wanted I had I couldn't bring uh, not bring up Vivid Kingdoms. Yeah. Also, I thought the 2020 transition because your life has been filled with new successes and craziness. I just want to ask about that. But yeah, we're just here to dick around and have fun, my yeah, guy. My dude. My yeah. dude. Are you sweating yet? I am I'm pretty toasty on here. Yeah. Luckily, this uh, wig is just like basically a sweatband as well. Yeah. So like by the end of this podcast, I'm just going to wring out this wig. I think we bucket. all look pretty darn good, yeah, if I do say toasty, so. Toasty, my guy. My guy. Um, yeah, do you, Chris, do you want to bring up? We have a we have a special little thing, but we got to put our headphones on just to keep it rolling. Did you do a, a audible version of your poem that we're going to listen to? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, no. We got something in store gotta, for you. I got to rock these. Dun dun dun! What is going on? We got something in what store is for this? you. Hey, Slew and Ten Hundred, two of your biggest fans here, Juniper and Chelsea. June has a very serious question oh to ask you. She's been dying to know. 
it's actually a two-parter. So the first part is, we all know you like to paint with a lot of color, so if you could paint with only one color for the rest of your life, what would that color be? And the second part is, if you could not paint with one color for the rest of your life, what would that color be? We're, we're dying to know. <laughs> oh my God. For those of know. you uh, watching, that is my wife, Chelsea, and my daughter, Juniper. So beautiful. And I barely even heard the question because my heart was just yeah. melting the whole time. You want me to play it again? It was one, co it was one color. I If I could only choose one color to paint with forever, then what would it be? And if I had to completely eliminate Remove, one color. Exactly. Shout out Chelsea and Juniper. Shout out Thanks Chelsea, for that, Chelsea, wifey and baby. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. That threw you for a loop right there. Yeah, that threw you a little surprise. <laughs> it was like a a cameo from like someone I know super well. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to get it from Chelsea. Um, I thought that was a great question because also you're the king of colors. Yeah, and I well, if I if I gave a boring utilitarian answer, I would say the one color that I would paint with that I could only paint with would be black because then I could just make bold graphic illustrative Pinkage, painting yeah but i would say like my favorite two colors that i'm kind of like known for at this point and like i go to all the time is teal and orange yep uh so out of those two i guess i would choose teal and if i would get rid of one color probably brown is my least used color oh interesting um you know i never think of brown as a color i use like <laughs> next to zero earth tones in my art it's yeah. all like vivid tropical lush like saturation explosion and yeah. that's like a part of my style uh so anything in the earth tone kind of category mm. is what i get rid of great great question chelsea yeah. great question. I, I <laughs> like that. Uh, we, had job, to, <laughs> we had to have some sort of like art centric question <laughs> and we'll hopefully flash again if people haven't seen your work that's just crazy but we'll flash some of your um murals and paintings but yeah i was i was gonna guess for you like orange yeah that you couldn't live without orange or the uh teal yeah and then but because it's funny and we uh, this was like the first mural we did and then like even we were picking out colors yesterday for the mural we we're gonna do this weekend like how different not only our styles are obviously but like the color palettes i chose and like i'm all about them earth tones yeah, maybe and like them super neutral like muted colors like grays like muted purple whatever but yeah you're you're um i walked in there and i was like that one that one that one that yeah. one that one like i kind of have just like my go-to super saturated and then like the colors that you chose were just like the complete antithesis of yeah. what i chose <laughs> that's why i like working with you bro that's why i like your art style is because it's yeah. like we're just so far apart but uh -huh. like i just think our personalities are like simpatico totally. yeah yeah and it's like-minded people doing different things i mean that's my favorite thing also and it's so funny because that's like another interesting i think conversation that i try to tell people about like the world we're in and what we do and, and like especially people who don't know YouTube, which is like actually a lot of my friends and family, like they don't get, you know what I mean? Like they don't get the world. They don't get the community yeah. or like whatever, but I barely get it. Shut up, dude. It's kind of crazy being okay. a YouTuber though, because like I talk to a lot of other YouTubers and like every single YouTuber big or small or whatever it's like they all give me like different tips and they all have like different little secrets to their success. And like, this algorithm that we all operate within as YouTubers is like so mysterious oh. and befuddling and confusing. There's not like a set of rules in a playbook. And even if there are hard and fast rules, like they can just change overnight. No, there so. are no, there's no secret sauce. There's no rules. It's just like stumbling around, like trying to make cool stuff, trying to make entertaining, good mm -hmm. stories. And that's like all I can really do is just try to make stuff that I think is super cool and just hope for the best. Right. And like what I was saying before you interrupted me was that like <laughs> the, the, the agenda of like being a YouTuber again, like my family knows me as like the artist, but like, that's just one fourth of sort of the job and yeah. the, the agenda when making content on YouTube. It's like you were saying storytelling, but through painting mm -hmm. is like the catalyst or the subject. But then it's through a video camera with lights. Yeah. Then you have to edit that thing, those things you capture. And then you have to arrange it in a story. You have to inject your personality, be entertaining, like even with your sponsorship parts you do all those animations so it's like it's like it's it's like uh it's like making a stew you know it's yeah. like all these ingredients that take so long that are super like you were just explaining it to some other person when we were out the other night and you were talking about like yeah. the different parts of your mind it takes to actually you know and especially you know you're doing it at a high level and you've been doing it for a while like the videos you make now are just redonkulous to but, me on my channel it's getting to the point where like the I think I said this in a video at some point, but like the art is just like, 
a prop or it's like the plot. Exactly. And like the real piece of art is the video itself. And at, at this point, when I first started my YouTube channel, like I was all about like documenting my art and maybe sharing it with a larger audience. But now, you know, I have an art channel, so I should make art, but the art actually just gives me an opportunity to like make a crazy skit or like write a freaking hip hop song about like gessoing a panel or like doing all these other yes. crazy storytelling things that keep me fascinated and keep me coming back to YouTube as a platform. And the art is just a vessel for me to be able to like try out all these different storytelling tactics and different camera angles. And to me, the real piece of art is like the video itself. Mm -hmm. And I, I know some other art YouTubers who kind of feel a similar way about no, it. No, I mean, you're preaching the choir and I, I, I like it's literally preach because I, I've said it before, the, uh, the filming and editing is a massive creative outlet for me. And I always tell people who don't really understand what I do or how the money is made. It's like I'm on the computer equal if not more than I'm behind uh, an easel painting you know what mm -hmm. I mean it's like that's the job it's like yeah the painting is like what you're capturing but it's like how you how you you know portray that painting the funny thing is I always tell people it's like how many different ways can you film the process of a painting you know it's so redundant it's so the same and it's like that's our job it's like how interesting can yeah. we make it how entertaining and once and we, you've done that like 50 times then you start doing the <laughs> weird stuff where it's yeah. like and that's like the most fun to me dude it's totally. like just start getting crazy with it do like, you know that chris found me through you how how did that happen so it was i don't remember when it was but i just started watching art youtube and then i found your videos and then you did a video with him. I was like, oh, who's this guy? Fuck this guy. I don't really like him. And then I decided to follow him on Instagram. <laughs> and then That's what I think every time I see Slim. Oh, my God. It takes me a while to warm yeah. up to him. <laughs> and then uh, he posted an Instagram. I had been doing another podcast, and then he posted an Instagram story about starting a podcast, and then I slid in his DMs. Hey, I make podcasts. Let's do something. And then mm -hmm. that was in November, and now we're here. But it's all thanks to you, my friend. Yeah, so, I'm basically you. responsible for 100% of your success is what's, what he's saying. Yeah. I would say, I agree. realistically, 93%. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. You can have that 7%. And again, I'm going to like just go on a limb here. <laughs> Peter is 1000. His name is Peter, by the way, if people don't know. Hello, I'm Peter. 1000 is so legit, it hurts my... It is just... <laughs> Maybe we'll bleep that, that out. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll bleep that out. Just, just um, edit out the word skin, change it to like. <laughs> He's so good, it hurts my. <laughs> um, but like. I'll cut that right there and I'll put it right there. I'm such a fan of your work, obviously, and that's why I watched your videos way back when. The first video I was telling you, poof, it's gone. The hat. Do you want to oh, fix your hair? You've been fuddling with it for a while. This is the worst. Dude. No, but it's so funny, bro. This, this is, is perfect. Is it, is How it else like, would it be? What a terrible costume, my Is no. there like a strand you can kind of tuck under your glasses? Or what about like a, a band of goggles that could? Oh, here, let me help you out. Yeah, yeah you've help every you two that. seconds you've been it's fixing terrible. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Hell, yeah, my brother. All right, we quick, are quick, quick little uh, arts and crafts by the yeah. Craft we had some here. wardrobe malfunction. This is so much better. I got my sweet little bandana going here. You look good. so gorgeous. Let me get my staff back in action. <laughs> All right, back on the YouTube tip because again, to throw it back when I visited in Seattle it was the first time I saw another YouTuber and his workflow and your studio and your setup and the camera you used and how you edited and it was so wonderful to share that experience. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And now, from us talking. And especially again, like you have to watch these videos that you produce that are so heavy editing, so many shots with your raps and everything. Like, how, how do you make these videos in the most generic sense possible? Can you run us through like your flow? Yeah. Accomplishing, well, storyboarding, getting the idea to executing. Up until like six months ago, it was like pretty much 100% me. But my workflow has really changed over the past six months. And I basically like I hired this girl named Alex and she was working in my shipping warehouse. She was sending out orders. She was sending out like customer service emails for like when things go wrong or whatever. And I just noticed like every single time I told her anything, like she just did it instantly. She never had to be told twice. She's just really super smart, super fast learner. And I was like, hmm. I was like, Alex, have you ever edited anything before? And she's like, well, I kind of had like a class back in high school where I edited like one thing before, but not really. And I was like, let me show you this program, Adobe Premiere. This is what I edit my videos on. 
and she basically started from like absolutely zero knowledge whatsoever. And I just kind of like showed her how to edit exactly like me. And it took like a decent amount of time, but now we're to the point where I'll be in the main filming room, like painting and recording myself, talking to the camera and stuff. And I'll just like take the footage back to her. And she does all of the like, the big broad brush strokes of editing. She'll, mm. she'll chop down everything. She'll take out all my pauses and ums and uhs and breaths and stuff and like make it concise, take out any part where I repeat myself so I'm not like just saying the same thing over and over again. And she'll get it like down really tight. And then I get to come in at like the last 10% and just do like a little bit of creative decision making and just being like, what if we move this chunk here? That might be a more effective way to tell the story. What if we brought this element in? And I just I just get to come in and like be creative and don't have to do any of the brute force like technical editing workflow. Right. And that's just like so invaluable. And now it's even getting to the point like on the last video I released, it was a collab video with me and Kipto doing the mural. Mm -hmm. We did this like epic two and a half minute intro where I wrote a script and every line of the script, I like wrote out the exact shot I wanted to see. I recorded the voiceover. And I gave Alex like this long list of shot lists. And a lot of it was like animation and yeah, like crazy so motion sick. graphics and stuff. It was hilarious also. And I was just <laughs> like, anytime you're not working on the videos we're currently working on, just open up this intro and like try and knock out another little three second frame or whatever. And she like put 90% of that together and she was doing stuff that was like, the vision I had in my mind's eye, like she exceeded what I was expecting her to do. And I'm Shout just out like, Alex. the student has become the master. Like That's I come amazing. in there all the time and I'm just like, how did you even do that? And I, like, she just surprised me. So like that is tremendously beneficial because it allows me pretty much every hour that I'm actually like working on my craft and working on YouTube videos, I'm mostly being creative instead of being bogged down in like a lot of this technical stuff that you have to do to make a video. Right. And like as the boss and it's still your videos, like you're you're seeing every point of the process, but you're more of like the directorial role. Yeah. And like the she, like you said, she trims the fat of the video. She organizes it. So that's crazy. bro. And every time like to me, it's been like six months and I'm just like so shocked that she went from like absolute zero to like completely surprising me with like the stuff that she's well doing that's like inspo software. straight yeah. up to people like listening like again me and chris talk about this all the time like the biggest thing to remove people from making videos which so many people want to do right like because everyone has an internet connection even filming with your freaking iphone that the editing is like the thing that really removes people and mm -hmm. like it is hard there is a learning curve right without doubt but it's also hugely creative like there is a huge technical side to editing but the power of storytelling and the power to present uh, what you're trying to do in your own way really comes down to like how it's edited and all that. A hundred percent. And that like it, you can learn it. Like maybe it will take three months, maybe it'll take four months or maybe for people who are a little, you know, missing some chromosomes, it may take <laughs> nine months. But if you get, if you speak that language, even at a basic level, then you could be super, super creative. Yeah. And I love that. And damn, shout out Alex. And you said something, we were in the Uber, you were talking about how like how important it is to not just find a super fast, awesome editor, but to have someone inside your brain edit like you. Yeah. Edit a 10 hundred video, not just be good at editing. Yeah, if I would have hired an editor who was like a super dope editor, they would have had decades of like editing their own way. And it's probably like super awesome and super professional. But then then it won't look like a 10 hundred video anymore. Mm. It'll look like a super professional, polished, like this is how you edit video. And I think a lot of the charm and a lot of the authenticity that you get from me and my videos has to do with the fact that like I'm self-taught. I just kind of figured it out. I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to tell stories with my own personality. And taking someone who's working right beside me day after day and training her up from like absolute zero means that she doesn't have all that baggage of like, this is how it's yeah. supposed to be done. Instead, you like, like synthesized her into yeah. existence. Yeah, I just cloned <laughs> myself. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the vibe. And I feel that with Chris. I mean, me and Chris are a little different and Chris is that super professional editor, mm. but we're making new stuff together. So it's like, it's a little different. And like, obviously- I also come from this, like you, I've been watching yeah. YouTube forever. So I know what he wants. And yeah, I born edit and like bred. that already. So we're already kind of yeah, on the just, same page. Yeah, it depends on your personality too. Course, like yeah. some people kind of dig their heels in and yeah. other people are like, okay, I'm down to try something new. And 
you got to pick your battles and everything, but yeah. Yeah. And also like a lot I think of, that's so interesting, by the way, a lot of the editors that you work with, like you have to freaking transfer like terabytes of footage over the internet. Just and But Alex is like, she's in that room. I'm in this room. It's like, here's the SD card. I'm going to go work on some art some more. And like, that is just like so dope to not have to transfer all these files over the internet. So if you know somebody smart in your life, <laughs> teach them how to do what you want them to do. You're a nice, kind wizard. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> Recognize Real, genius. Yeah, 100%. I love that. I mean, I think that's so interesting. Oh, going forward. Can I add something? I just want to say no. that like, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I tell everybody, no matter what profession you're in, I feel like video editing and being able to like work your way around video is one of the most important skills right now. Like it's not going anywhere. And anyone in no matter what path you're in, you do dentistry or you make art or do this and everybody needs video. So I feel like it's just a good school to skill to have. And I just wanted to I add that in there. I not agree more. And I feel like especially you and I on this podcast specifically <laughs> taught we shove it down people's throat. Not that people care or listening, but like learning. I mean, we're all pretty much self-taught. Like we didn't go to video school. All the, the most creators, most social media professionals are self-taught and they just learn it and they're super passionate and the passion drives them. But like diving into video editing and like really sticking it out and failing for like a long time. But like, progressing is like one of the most proud things i am about myself mm. i think i should rearrange that sentence a little bit but like <laughs> it's it's what i'm most proud of myself because it is so powerful and it's so fun and i really love to do it and i know a lot of people who dislike editing a lot creators other youtubers and yeah of course it's like extremely long and annoying uh, like most of the time like you know it's not again we're not i'm not trying to glorify like sitting in the front of the computer bleeding through the eyes you know every weekday but it really is rewarding especially when you watch the video you made and sharing it like it has you know? some freaking moment when you've been struggling with a certain section of your video mm. and how to tell an effective story and then you step back and you're like let me just rearrange this whole thing and then it all clicks and you're like oh like i just i just i know this is going to connect with my audience now like that is like straight up euphoria when you can figure out how to tell a story in a much more effective way totally i i, I really love that man what editing else, what else do you love what else are you into i'm interested in what can we talk about music for a little yeah let's because like music, you're man. mr i know your life revolves around your empire and your awesome artwork <laughs> but what else are you into besides that what else do you do peter um, Robinson. Well, my past is heavily entrenched in music. I went to school for audio engineering. I Damn. worked in LA at like really big recording studios with like different A list celebrities every day. I moved to Seattle, set up my own recording studio, joined a couple of bands that became mildly popular, especially in the Northwest region of the United States and made beats for people mixed recorded like music 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 and i did that for like a decade and uh and then i completely like just switched gears around like 27 years old to making visual art because visual art was like always something of a hobby and music was like something i was trying to make a career out of and then I just flipped those two roles where visual art became my career and now music is like something that's a hobby and like being a YouTuber, being able to use my audio engineering skills on like my voiceover and all that stuff and being able to write stupid songs about like spray paint and matte medium and gesso. It's like now it's fun and relaxing and enjoyable to make music mm. for my videos because it's like not that serious. And uh, yeah, I'm just so glad I have that whole background because it's really fed into this like new career path that i'm on yeah that's amazing i mean yeah no i'm no one i've never i watch a lot of youtube videos no one does the whole rapping to the level and sound production they like they little musicals sometimes <laughs> dude i mean i just like i almost get pissed off how sick they are you know it's like what the fuck like, I, how did the i remember when you first started doing it, i was like wait what was that yeah, and then that i like, like rewatch it and then they just kept coming and they yeah. were better i was like what the Yo, what what is that? going yeah. on and also it's like People it's who watch my videos for the first time, like oh if they're God. if they're first time watcher, and then all of a sudden, like this dude just starts like rapping about art supplies. I 
I like to think and just chuckle to myself about the person <laughs> who's like, wait a second, what? <laughs> but think of the element of storytelling. It just it comes adds, out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, it's like literally, you're like narrating. Yeah. It's like you're painting, your video self, you're painting, and you're singing, rapping about the painting. Yeah. It's like, it's like and every I'll, orifice of your. That you comes know, back sentience. to what you were talking about earlier, where you're like, how many ways can you film a painting? Like, yes. I got. I got really tired of like uh, putting painting footage and then recording a voiceover. Like now I'm using golden fluid acrylics and I'm using Trakel brushes and I'm using this kind of panel. And right. like, that formula, I had done like 25 videos doing that exact same thing. And I'm just like, what can I do instead of this? Like, I'm so bored of doing this. And I was like, well, I guess I should just rap about art. Were you art nervous the first now. time you sort of put it out? Because it's like a very like, yeah. I mean, now it's like so. It's nothing but epic, but I'm, it's funny because in the was very beginning, vulnerable? in the very beginning, it was maybe like two lines mm. and like very like low key, and now it's like there'll be like a sixteen bar verse with like backup <laughs> hype man vocals and like auto tune yeah, going on and like extra like additional elements and chops and edits and stuff. A lot of the videos, there's like four different songs. Yeah, they become four different more... <laughs> beats, four different like flows. It's yeah. like echo, echo. What, what was John always saying? <laughs> put the gesso on the canvas, <laughs> you know, like, but then there's like really hype, like, you yeah. know, full, super fast. I mean, it's just so epic. They, I guess I was a little nervous when I first did it because like the first time I did it, it was like just this very, very background weird moment. And now it's like full force front and center, fully produced songs. And How do you pick which section you're going to rap to? Like, do you have it before or are you kind of like doing the whole painting project? And then in the editing phase, you're like, all right, let me put this like, 16 bar sequence in to kind of give some narrate. I don't know. Like what is. Yeah. What well, like? the way that I edit my videos in general is like we build it up. So like I'll record the intro to my video. We'll completely edit it and get it to a point where it's like 90% done and be like, okay, th that's the energy of that section. And that's how that section goes. What type of energy do I want to have next so that I don't lose viewers? I keep retention. The energy stays up. It has a nice flow to it we'll film the next section, edit that. And like, we literally build our video like chunk by chunk. I don't like make an entire painting, film the whole thing. And then I have all this footage and now let's edit the whole thing and see what happens. It's very like Interesting. methodical block yeah. by block, scene by scene. And that's how I think I'm able to like achieve the energy and the flow and the experience that I want my videos mm -hmm. to have. That's why I actually like making murals is like my least favorite kind of video to make. Hot because take, hot take. <laughs> when I make a mural, I like get all my paint and get all my camera equipment and like go out to this wall and paint the wall and film the whole thing. And I try to remember to like talk to the camera and I try to get some zany things happening on the street. And then I go back to my studio and I have to like edit the whole thing. And I think my mural videos have such a different feel than like the videos that I make in my studio where I'm like, literally like plotting and it's surgical everything it's curated surgical yeah. and it's much more than just the painting yeah so that makes sense that the mural project is like kind of you you can't you don't have that much uh mobility yeah and so you're, it's such a huge project and you're so focused on the wall and and a mural is like a crazy battle between like yourself and this wall and like trying to get it right and you have like hundreds of people driving by and it's like not done yet and it looks ugly and you're like i promise it's gonna look yeah, good and right. it's just come back this, in two days it's like this high octane experience and then remembering to film and then remembering to talk to the camera and trying to think up like funny little moments that you can do it's just like so much harder but like when i'm in my studio and i'm just like mm -hmm. doing weird stuff like that's my favorite type of video to make yeah i love them i mean like you set the standard and i just like i'm so i i get so inspired to do better when i watch your videos because it's like bro. i mean it's just like me and chris talk about it i mean i mean i think when we also said this like gox is mm -hmm. like making just jaw dropping content but like you're you know right there it's different but it's the, like the the upperest echelon you could possibly make art videos you know and who was saying they were like you should make a TV show like 1000 <laughs> should have like his own network on Discovery Channel. I'm like, dude, he's like his own network director. Yeah, I think actor. YouTube is like way cooler dude, than TV. Yeah, I'm dude. like, I don't want to see 1000 on Discovery Channel. Like he's like fucking Yeah, having like they would slow about... him the fridge down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, my dad is always like, "Oh man, like it's going to be so cool if you ever had a show on TV or something." It's like, oh, "That's like the last thing I want." Mm -hmm. Not that I think I could get a show on TV or anything, but like 
yeah, having complete and total creative control is like the best thing about being a YouTuber. Yeah. And you can bring people in that can maybe help you achieve your vision better than you can do it yourself. But like you still kind of get to be the dude in charge and 10 hundred is the name on the channel. But like if I were to go and make some kind of street art show on like Bravo or something, there'd be like all these execs and like all these people who are like, you can't say that you can't do this. Opposite of like raw, like creative, like passion. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. Do you get inspired by other YouTubers? Cause I know you're a fan and you're you're not only a creator at the highest level, but you are are a consumer. Well, dude, like six, seven months ago, I was texting you all the time about like cinematography stuff and Mm -hmm. camera setting stuff. It's like, I was telling you in the, in the Uber or whatever. I was like, I can't even look at my videos from like six months ago. That's so funny. like somehow I just had this crazy epiphany where I'm like, I have all this nice camera equipment and I'm don't know that much about cameras. And I just took like a couple weeks and just did an insane YouTube tutorial crash course about like what every single setting does. And I was still using like all the same gear and all of a sudden my videos just became like instantly cinematic and like looked so much better yeah. just because I wasn't taking the time to just like, figure out how to use my freaking camera night so and day like, i mean your I videos have always been crazy inspiring to me for a long time because you've had that knowledge under your belt for a long time and i feel like i'm just getting to the point where i'm like okay like if i put on a 10 100 video and i put on a slew video like they look they look pretty good next to each sure. other i mean yeah. you're if not better because your studio is just you're surgical everything about you and that's what people don't know i'm i'm giving you the inside scoop but this man you know you don't really do things like you said, your videos, you know, back then weren't at the level now. But when you do things, you kind of go buck wild. And yeah, you, you, I think this is a great skill. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like a, a skill in anything, any route. And I think, Chris, we've talked about this, like is understanding what is wrong with something. If you know, if you know what to not to do or what is wrong with something, you are way, you have a way higher chance of figuring out the right way. And that right way is subjective. I'm not saying there's one right way, but like for your videos, I'm saying this is the analogy. It's like you knew that there it was a higher level of quality that you could achieve. Mm-hmm. I know this is wrong. Let me figure out how to change that. You know, so it's like for artists, I think that's just like observation skills. It's like, oh, what shape are your painted mural? This needs to be different. Like this is wrong. Let me figure out the right way. And almost that failure uh, loop is like what leads to the success. But I think that's a perfect example of you watching youtube videos or you're saying you saw my videos which aren't that much more cinematic than anyone else's i mean compared to gox i'm shooting with a flip phone but gox is a wizard oh well i'm a wizard but <laughs> <laughs> gox is a wizard gox with the edits, is bro. out of shout his out gox. mind shout out gox. i mean shout all gox. you know what's crazy i feel like over the last year and to me especially with like that youtuber collab piece that went around oh we got to talk like, about that shit um chris i feel like the youtuber art community like i don't know how it was before but like i just feel like really connected to all these other creators who have art channels and like i feel like i've made a lot of like youtuber artist homies over the last year and i think we have like to me i feel like we have a really strong scene right now on like youtube art channels and i'm homies with everybody and i think everybody does a phenomenal Bro, that job freaking hypes me up so much man yeah i love that shit i love it and the the painting that went from like me to you from break it YouTuber down can we YouTuber break this down real quick let's yeah. run it through because this is again again people should be on top of this and there's a little uh lull in the hype because we're your the canvas is being framed custom framed by sir bobby duke <laughs> but how epic is that yeah did it blow your expectations it totally. certainly exploded my totally. brain. Yeah. So can we run it back? Real elevator pitch. What, what, I mean, it was your, it was your baby. So, yeah, like, so what I were s- you thinking? For those that aren't familiar with it, I made, I took a panel and made a painting out of it, but I just painted one small part. And my whole idea was I'm going to take this painting and send it to another YouTuber. And then that YouTuber is going to get the painting and make their small part of it. And then they're going to choose another YouTuber to send it to. And then they're going to make a small part and send it to another YouTuber and so on and so forth until we have a full completed painting. And like, I'm not going to know where it's going to go or where it's going to end up. Each person can go from like channel to channel to channel and watch the videos that are being made as this thing slowly progresses and this collaboration happens. And Man, that thing took off, dude. Oh like it snowballed God. hella hard and it made it to just such awesome creators. And for me, like 
It was one of the best YouTube viewing experiences I've ever, ever. had. Because like, first of all, I was so excited to see like what the next artist was. Because no one make. knew. And then at the end of each video was like the big yeah, reveal the of big who reveal. was going to the biggest was, reveal that you could have in like a YouTube video. Yeah, and I was like, and you would just wait till the end, and then they would like surprise you with who's mm -hmm. going to be next, and you'd be like, oh, it's going to. And next. I told you like, okay, so when ten hundred to me, I sent it to Doke, so immediately it went to Europe global because Doke's in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah, something like that. No, he's in Slovakia. Yeah, and um, and then so from there, it's like, okay, where is it going? Sends it to Smo which is a, another homie in the community. Shout mm -hmm. out Smo, amazing videos. And then Smo, and this is crazy because I've been watching Martina at NerdForge for years, like prop stuff. She does, she's a painter. She's like a multifaceted artist. And I, 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 I was jaw dropped when I was like, oh my God, it's Smo, going to yeah. Martina. And then from Martina to freaking Alpe, Alpe, I don't want to mispronounce. I think that's how you do it. Who's an epic oil painter Yeah, that I love been watching for years also and Can we I'm put links to all these people in the description nah, for the nah, viewers nah, 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 yeah nah, nah, go nah, down nah. in the description and check out all these freaking <laughs> yeah well, watch the whole series i mean it's yeah. epic but then to i'll pay to jazza yeah and jazz is like the king pretty much on top right now and he's like the og granddaddy art youtuber grand jazza daddy he's shout out bowser jazza. shout out everybody <laughs> shout out, yeah he's, a, <laughs> he's <laughs> bowser <laughs> <laughs> and just the scale, just, I mean, I thought it was going to be dope and it was an awesome idea, but who knew? Similar, maybe to your Vivid Kids. And then, thing, wait, but wait, there's one more. So Jazza, uh, everybody thought it was done. And I then uh, Bobby Duke is making, he's a crazy woodworker, sculptor. He's making this crazy custom frame. So that's where it is right now. Everybody's waiting for Bobby Duke's video. I get like a thousand comments a day that are like, where's the painting at? Like that's, <laughs> that was the only negative part about this project is like people would just get like spammed with like, where's the painting going to be oh, done? Yeah. Hurry up. Or, did you get a lot of that? Yeah, uh, of yeah. course. Everyone's like, where is it? What's going on? But the, the hype is just, yeah. you know, it is just collating this, this, this cauldron of hype. And I just can't wait. I mean, it's just so epic. And what's the sort of agenda again? We're so at the end, it's going to get auctioned off for charity. The original piece will will get auctioned off, and then we're making prints of it that are going to be more widely available and more affordable. And that's all going to hundred percent go into hundred percent of the profits go into charity. Yeah, which is awesome. We have the charity picked out, but we uh, are not. I'll just reveal that in like the final yeah. review video or whatever when I get the painting back. I'm going to make like a. Final review video. We're going to announce where you can bid on the painting. We're going to announce where you can buy the prints. Charity, awesome, good vibes, love, peace of the world type of thing. It's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just all the above. And all my friends, dude, like my roommates, my sisters, they're all like, they watched all of it. You know, they watched every part and it was like I so know. epic. That was a fun one. And that's, I don't think that's should been we, done. Should I do a little teaser for sneeze, for season two right now? <gasps> Ooh. You heard Ooh. it here first on Slooniverse. Boom, boom, boom. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Yes, I'm not going to I'm not going to share the details, but I got sneaky little plans for season 2 of the season. largest collab on YouTube. Holy start wow. Schmeckle. You come to Slooniverse for the the hot new gossip exclusive. on the YouTube streets. <laughs> That's so exciting. Wow, I just got a little goosebumps. Yeah, we can it can't be a one and done, dude. It was so Ooh. tight, man. It was so tight. tight. Nothing's like been that. Again, I think like you obviously have a lot to do with this community of just building like there is an art community and everyone kind of knows each other you know like or else we wouldn't be able to send it to other homies and they wouldn't respond but like now it's like everyone's getting in bed with everyone you know completely pl platonically of course but like <laughs> it, it's it's so wonderful you know because yeah. real recognize well, it's just respect you know like i said i watch all these people i love their videos and now we're all like working with each other we're helping each other out hello I think we all know how much work it takes to not only be an artist, but to be an artist that documents through film almost everything that they do. Because mm -hmm. that's like making a painting is like one full time job and making a video is another full time job. And when you put those together, it can be it can be quite the daunting task. So I have like immediate respect for any artist mm -hmm. that also on top of that is attempting or being successful at being a youtuber because totally. it's not an easy road to travel my friends i'll tell you what yeah all the way from the shire to mordor am i right <laughs> gets me freaking going um should we play a nice little game yeah you're looking so sexy man thanks bro i'm like you know i have like a thing for big hairy wizards <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> 
I have a thing for centurions. <laughs> <laughs> Great word. Yeah, well, Isn't that what Roman soldiers were called? Oh, no, I think you're Roman right. But like, I wouldn't say, you know, it's like, what do you mean for Halloween? Oh, you know, I'm like a 14th century centurion. <laughs> I From the Gulf of um, <laughs> the <Tonkin>. Isles. <laughs> <laughs> the Gulf of the Isles. All right, so we're going to play a game now. And this is Chris and Peter's idea. Peter, can you just give us a rundown of what we're doing here? Yeah, I was talking to Slow. I was like, you ever mess with that Akinator Genie website? Akinator, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to think of a, a character from fiction or even like a real person or whatever. And the wise and powerful Akinator is going to try and rub that a little. Freaking read your mind. Ooh. And I, my money's on the Akinator. Really? So, so we're not playing against each other. This is no, kind you're of, playing against the computer. Okay. All right. So think of a real fictional character. I want to, all right. So it could be, I want to do, I'm a huge X Men fan. So we'll do, I want to do Wolverine. Same. All right. Wolverine. So character. Is your character a female? No. <laughs> <laughs> Has your character really existed? No. So this is like a fictional. Yeah, yeah. So no. Okay. Bro, Akinator's got this. Does your character have powers? Yes. Right. Like he Wolverine. He's he, got the healing factor. He heals, he's got um. What's the medal? Don't tell me. Don't tell me the medal. Oh, come Don't on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. People at home are screaming no! at the screen. <laughs> Like, oh my god! You know, the first letter. I commit. I, I, I mix it with vibranium from Marvel. No, it's not vibranium. I know. It's uh. Come on, dude. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna freak out. People are breaking. Just tell me computer. before, so we could get this. Over. Adamantium. Adamantium. God damn it, dude. Yeah, I mix the vibranium. With Does it. your character have powers? Yes. Is no. your character well, from a Japanese no. anime? No, it's not from Japan. Japanese. I'm assuming it's not. It's a, been it's like, a Marvel character. There's been like versions where he's like. We're gonna say no because it's, it's not even anime. It's, it's Marvel. Yes. Has your character been in a movie? Yes. All right. Sorry. We'll read. Is your <gasps> character related to Marvel? Activator. Yes. Is your characters from Avengers: Infinity War? Negatory. Negative. Does your character have sharp teeth? Mm, no. Does your character wear a mask? No. You what? Yeah, he what? does. Well, the comic version does. He's got the freaking... Sp- oh, he pointy. does. It looks like uh, almost MF Doom's mask, right? I guess it depends on if you're talking about like, what the do you movies. Think, Chris? Or... I would say yes. Really? I don't know. Wolverine? He's got the iconic, like, freaking spiky owl looking... Yeah. Okay, I think you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's valid. But I mean, in all the movies, no. Yeah. And everything... All right, so this might be a pivotal question. So I say yes. You're right. In the comics, yes. But he said Marvel... Yeah, Marvel Comics. All right, yeah, Chris is doing some. All right, if the first picture shows Look, up, yeah, with you're a right. Mask, no, okay. I agree. I yeah. agree. You're right. Thank you, ten hundred. Don't answer for me anymore. Does your character eat bamboo? Yes. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Does your character do duets? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine's just like T for do, do, do a deer, a female. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Is your character linked with spiders? No. Is your character a fusion? I feel like he's just asking extra questions now. All right, we're on 13. Is it only 20? Is your character a fusion? No. I don't think so. What does a fusion mean? I don't think he's a fusion. Is your character mostly red? No. Is your character a zombie? No. I'm nervous, man. If he gets this, I'm going to freak out. Is your character tour internationally? Wait, I look. feel like you toss him for a loop here. Usually <laughs> they get it by now. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, shice. I don't think he tours internationally. Should we say probably not? No, it's just no, right? Yeah, tour, like what does tour mean? Does your character wear a cape? No. Is your character a villain? <sighs> See, this is... That's up for contention. Especially in the mutant story. No. Yeah, no. Should I, should I put don't know? No, he's a, no, he's a he's a freaking he's not he's a hero. He's just like but he has a, a his, he plays his, by his own rules. Yeah, his man. character arc is like filled with like regret and revenge. But no, does your is your character yeah, used would say, by the military? I would say yes. Sometimes, like he was was made he for weapon, weapon X or yeah, something. Yeah, he was made as a weapon. Chris, what do you think? Way in here, I would say probably. 
Okay. Yeah, we haven't done it probably. I don't know if he's used by the United States military. It's always like some secret faction organization. No, exactly. Like, but that's what I was saying. Like he was he his whole like conversion to a mutant was to be weaponized. Yeah, but that was that by the military. Wait, wait. It says correct down there. Yeah, I don't know what. Oh, you can correct your answer. Wait, that goes back. Wait, I, I just can't, I can't drag. It. Um, let's say no. Okay. Does your character oh, have claws? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Say yes. Does your character oh, wear yellow yes, clothing? He <laughs> He's got it, baby. Is your character related to darkness? Um, That's an ambiguous question. Yeah. In what way? I mean, he has dark thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might want to go in the either don't know or one of those probably zones. All right. Let's go don't know. Let's go don't know. Does your character have sideburns? Oh no, they oh, got, he's got he's some got premium he's got sideburns, yes, baby. He's got it. Oh, oh my Echinator gosh. wins again. That's pretty impressive, man. <laughs> All right, you have to do one. You have to pick a character now. You here. Go some crazy obscure. Do they have? I'm actually pretty impressed by that. Okay, so. All right, throw him for a loop. What's this character's name? I'm too skinny for this. Is this a f popular character? That's called wifey, right there. Waifu. No. <laughs> oh no, she got a haircut. I'll fix that later. Um oh they do have objects. Dude, what if we do like just a really So but it says thematic, so what's a thematic object? Oh, we could do the genie lantern. That's a that's good like, object. That's so pop that's like Wolverine level of popularity. Right, but that's like a swag object. We gotta we gotta get go. Or like your staff. Gaskets. We could do your staff. <laughs> ten hundred staff on the so our our answer is ten hundred staff on the Slooniverse podcast, which hasn't come out yet. Can Akinator get that? I love this genie. Great art, right um, there. Um, come on, what do we got? It's your call, man. I don't want to. What about you. Matt Medium? You think he could guess that? Holy Matt Medium. wiener! Because it can be a real object, right? Yeah, I think so. It seems like it. Okay, or should we make it a little easier on him and just do yeah. Jesso? <laughs> Jesso. How about Jesso? Okay. All right, let's go objects. All right, we're doing Jesso. I'll read it. Does your does it have a relationship with sexuality? For me, yes, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not for other people, though. Oh, man, I would say cool. no, but is it an electronic device? No. Does it go into the mouth? For me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We'll go with no. Can we buy it? Who's yes. we? Yes, we can. We should. Everyone Jesso, should. baby. Is it a toy? Is it a toy? No. You take Jesso very seriously. Is it made of metal? No. Is it something we wear? No. Can it be open or closed? Yes. <laughs> Is it made of paper? No. I'm going to freak out if it gets this. <laughs> Does it, it contain it. a liquid? Hell yeah. Well, yeah. It's like a uh, it's like a gooey paste. Yeah, it's a it's an acrylic medium. I just say probably. Because it's like somewhere between liquid and solid. Is, is it, it bigger, bigger than, than a foot? foot? Ooh, interesting. Don't know, maybe? Um, I like your wizard I guess pondering it... face. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that one. Is it bigger than a foot? I would say probably not. Yeah. Or don't know. That's a weird one. But who knows, Akinators? Can it be found in a kitchen? Oh, look at his different expression. <laughs> I know, he's, he's like, oh, he's thinking, thinking so hard. hard. Can it be found in a kitchen? No. In yours? Cooking up in the kitchen. Can we find no? Do we use it at school? Mm, art school. Yeah. Say, eh, what do you think? Probably. Yeah, probably. Does it have a relation with drawing or painting? Oh, 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 yeah, I mean, I would consider I Jesso a liquid. I think he's asking. For yeah, it. say yes. But he, we are did. Does it come in various shades? No. But you could get clear. I have I mean, clear Jesso, honestly. I do. I've used clear Jesso. A yeah, lot. they do have black Jesso too, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Um, I guess we'll go with yes then. But now he's thinking it's paint. Does it use fuel, fuel to run? That's out of nowhere. No. No. Can it be found in Colombia? That's a joke. <laughs> is Colombia like Colombia, but... There we go. 
Colombia is a fictional country uh, in the Belgian comic <laughs> hero and fantasy. Wow, this guy's going <laughs> deep. <laughs> Does he think this is a fictional object? I hope not. I mean, dude, the painting drawing thing I know. is say no. Frightening, yeah. Columbia. Was it created in 2009? No. I mean, no. Some was. Does it originate from Russia? No. He's never going to get this. We might have stumped Does it. Does it have clothes? No. Yeah, I think this took a turn. Can we transport it in a pocket? Uh, yes. You can, definitely. I mean, right? Little little jar of gesso. Does it serve to attach to something technically that's like a very like basic definition does, of what no it, does it serve to attach something like, oh attach something i thought well, i guess something. it attaches to something to attach something i mean the whole point of gesso is to attach paint to whatever is yeah it's a ground around. to paint upon i would say yes okay Elmer's Ooh. glue. Oh my he god. Was wow. That is close. Dude. He was close. Wow, this man. guy is vast in his knowledge. Should we continue? I think we've had enough of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I was really gonna freak out if he got just so I know. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, what's this? Acrylic paint, thumb paint, cocoa oh. marker, mod podge. It's very close. I mean acrylic paint for painting. Yeah. Gesso's yeah. not an option on there. We stomped him. Yeah, dude, my character's not on the list. Gesso, G-E-S-S-O, baby. Wow, I love that. Now he's got a White new... White Gesso, okay. Yep. White Gesso, oh yeah, used for pain. Bravo, you defeated me. Hells yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love this dude. Should I paint this Take dude on the that mural? Take Akinator, yeah. <laughs> Should I literally do the Akinator? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, if And then see if he could guess you painting him. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this guy is legendary. That was awesome. Yeah, Wolverine, I knew he had that one. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay. that one in the bag. I've never played that. That's wonderful. All right, so what we're going to do is 1000 is going to go live right now, and we're going to look for questions. This is like a very like metaverse inception situation, right? What's up, Instagram Live people? Me and Slu are live right now on the Sluniverse podcast. This man's amazing podcast. Woo! And we're going to do some live questions that will be also on the podcast. That's so right. Answer or ask questions. Anything. What should they ask about? What do they want? What do they What do they got? How many people are on there? This is your Instagram. So maybe questions for you. Yeah, you're the guest. 540. Ask us questions. 546? We are going to oh, answer them. Awesome. You're a wizard, Peter. You're a wizard. <laughs> Perhaps they're asking questions about why we're wearing this stuff. Right, oh, wow. So hey, guys. This is a Halloween <laughs> special on the Slewverse podcast. But yeah. Peter's the guest. So ask questions about 1000, about his artwork. What else? Most about random thing I have ever seen for the longest. <laughs> We want questions. Give us Q. We'll give you A's. What is the next big <laughs> dream project? That's a good question. The next big dream project. We had the playing cards. Next, chess set, baby. Wow. May not be soon, That's an but that's the next dream. That's a great answer. Oh, my gosh. I love chess. Someone asked, when is the next mural collab? Uh, literally right now. <laughs> we have a half-done mural over in the Bronx. Should we drop a location on our Instagram yeah, stories Yeah, people were DMing me a lot about where... If you're in New York City, we'll drop a location on our Instagram stories tomorrow. You can come come by and say what's up. But we're going to be painting like madmen because we literally only have one day to paint this whole mural. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably like, do 12 hours tomorrow in the Bronx. Um, tomorrow is Monday. This podcast will come out later. But yeah, tomorrow we should. People yeah. were DMing me. What I mean, magic power would you want? Uh, I mean, I'm a wizard, so I got magic powers on lock, such as turning people into toads, <laughs> destroying the one ring, fighting other evil wizards. I, um, I actually low key, like, really want to be like an elf. So nimble on my feet, live forever. Also, I like how you started with nimble on your feet and then you went to live forever. Like those two are somehow Well, equal. that's like the... You know, that, nimble on my feet. That's the attributes forever. of elves, specifically from the Lord of the Rings because I'm getting inspired from that. But yeah, also you, my number one superpower that I've always thought I've had an answer to this question is to stop time. Oh, yeah. And like only one hour a day. So you get one hour today because if you stop time forever, then you would grow old and the whole world of time would be that creates some serious paradoxes that's what dude. i'm saying but you only get one hour a day so if you did one hour a day for like 10 years that's not that much time maybe you're only living longer for uh you know a few days or weeks rather than if you had unlimited time to stop so that's like kind of the the restriction that i think is fair and realistic <laughs> that's just heady man <laughs> i thought about that a lot okay next question how has your life changed since becoming a father 
Ah, uh, well, the the most life changing moment of my day every day is like after I've been working in my YouTube studio for hours and hours, I come home and Juniper is just now at the age where she like recognizes me and just beams and is so happy to see me and like literally every day in my heart i just have my heart every day of my life i just have my heart destroyed by like the amazing awesomeness of like having a daughter who's so excited to see me and as she continues to grow older and older she's just going to become this amazing cool little person with like her own ideas and like dude it's the best whoever whoever asked that it's just like the best thing ever that is so nice have you ever have either of you ever considered sculpting? Yeah, I love sculpting and one of my dreams is to do like bronze castings of my characters and you start out by clay and then you kind of make a resin cast and you can make kind of anything but total that's a total yes for me, but I don't do it a lot. I have never done it really for real. I freaking hate clay. I'm yeah, like but what so about ham-fisted. Every time I work on it, like I mess up the other side. I love seeing my stuff rendered in 3D and I love seeing like toy figurines in my stuff. But when it actually comes to me sculpting, that is one thing I have not cracked yet. Yeah, but I was going to say, because you do have wonderful toys that are like, you don't sculpt them yourselves, but they're sculptures of your work. Mm. But you're not the sculptor. That's right. You got some fumbling hands, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your advice to aspiring artists? Great question. I would say that practice, 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 practice. A lot of times you can go on YouTube or social media and see artists that are just like absolutely killing it and it can make you feel so inadequate and have you just feeling like so insecure about your own art. But the way that those people got there is they just put time, 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 time into their art and you're just going to suck for a long time but hopefully eventually you'll run out of ways to suck and that's like just how you get good at art yeah i mean i'd say the same thing to people there's there's the one thing where there's no secret there's no secret to improvement other than hard work and time put in boom let's do one more one more one more juicy thanks one. everybody for jumping on the live this is so awesome yeah. it's great getting these questions how do you this. stay motivated to create every day Ooh, that's a heater <laughs> Well, talk about the most hardworking, motivated person I know. Part of me is Chris. Part of me, <laughs> when I'm not creating or working on freaking 10 projects at once, I actually get a little bit bummed out. Like, just a part of my personality really loves being busy. And like, I get this kind of rush whenever I make something. And like, making art makes me feel really good. So it's kind of like a selfish thing of just like loving what I do. And then on top of that, I've gotten to the point where I've like built up an audience and a following and like people who like my videos. And when I put my videos out, I get all these awesome like comments and feedback and stuff. So that definitely motivates to continue like releasing my videos and putting out my art for the world to see. Um, so that's kind of how I stay motivated. Yeah, I would back that. I mean, like it's like a compulsion, you know, and it's like there's a lot of things that bring you joy, but like making things and being excited about the things you make is like pretty much the most addicting thing I'd say. Yeah. As like an artist and a creator. It is a compulsion. <laughs> yeah. And it's also like the most authentic feeling of satisfaction. It's not, it's fleeting. Everything's fleeting, but like to make stuff and feel good about your stuff. I don't know. That's deep. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for jumping on the Instagram live. What do we have now? How many people? 243. Woo, baby. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> all right. Those is wow we that, did it man that was fun we did a podcast yeah let's let's cheers swords let's touch tips brother who would win in a battle honestly gondel for a centurion well i got more reach well I, and I, would, I got magic i know i was about to say it's not even a contest <laughs> <laughs> it is not even a contest all right well let's let's end this up what a pleasure halloween special with 10 hundred the 11th Sluniverse episode and let me just say you're awesome thank you and your you're hard awesome. work and just how you make videos and how generous you are is inspiring. And I appreciate you. Tend on a deep, lovely note. But you're my boy. Bro. And, I appreciate uh, you too, man. Yeah. And like, you're it, awesome. Thanks, bro. But yeah, this was fun. And hopefully, this is one of many. And obviously, um, please come back whenever. And I hope Chelsea gets out here too, because I want to say hi. And I want to come to Michigan. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's like us now. 
Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Salute. Thank you so much for having me. Of this course. has been righteous. We're going to go paint a mural tomorrow. We got just... so much work to do. Peter leaves in two days, and this is just like one of the things we had to get done. But wow, we got some work. <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs>